I am your instructor, Dr. Alam Han, and the subject name is Economy of Pakistan and Economic Problem of Pakistan. In today's lecture, we will discuss the debt management of Pakistan. As in the previous lecture, we have discussed the different issues that Pakistan economy are facing. As when we talked about the overall economic issues of the Pakistan economy like inflation, budget deficit, trade deficit, bills of payment issue. Among those economic issues, one is the debt management of Pakistan. Before going into the details of this particular lecture, is the outline of this lecture that will discuss public debt, types of the public debt, trends in public debt, dynamics of public debt burden, components of domestic debt, composition of external debt, consequences of the poor debt management, and and then we will conclude our lecture. There are certain concepts that is related with the debt. Among those concepts, one is the public debt. By public debt, we mean government debt. The government debt, the proportion of the total debt which has a direct charge on government revenue as well as the debt obtained from the IMF is defined as the public debt. The public debt can further be divided into two components, internal debt and external debt. By internal debt, we mean the domestic debt that is owned to lenders within the country. Within the country. While external debt, it simply means outside the country. It is owned to foreign lenders. Another common division of the public debt is by duration until repayment is due and on the basis of the duration it may be short term debt or long term debt by short term debt we mean the debt will be considered a short term if its duration is up to one or less than one year. By long term debt, we mean that type of debt whose duration is more than 10 years. In the introduction part of this particular lecture, we will look at that assessing the debt management performance. Why it's important? It's important because that the government public debt and resultant rise in the debt burden is an issue of great concern of the particular economy. What, what is debt management? Is the debt management is bad thing or good thing? Debt by itself is not bad. The major problem of its utilization. As 
if the same DIT is used in some productive resources, it will generate more and more income in the future and that will bring more prosperity. But if the same date that can be used for the non-development expenditure, then it will be an issue. So the analysis and management of a country's debt portfolio are critical not only for maintaining macroeconomic stability, they also mobilize long-term resources for the country's development and help out the building blocks for a domestic money market. Trends in the public debt. This particular table explains the overall debt of the Pakistan economy from the 1970s to 2015. This table concluded that Public debt was recorded at R is 16,936 billion, which is almost 61.8% of the GDP at the end March 2015. If you look at the 2015 figure, it is around about 16,936. The friend resource are the increase in the public debt rate if you look at the previous year. The previous year, the 2014, the public debt was around 15,996. So the friend resource are the increase in the public debt was in domestic debt, debt position at RS 11,932 billion, whereas external debt was at R is 5,004 billion rupees. Overall, the external debt declined. If you look at the previous year in 2014, the public debt was 5,076 billion rupees, while in the 2015, it is decreased from 5,776 to 5,000 on certain indicators when we talked about the public debt there is either the public debt how much it's to the GDP Pakistan fiscal balances improved significantly in 2013-14 as compared with 2012-13 actual fiscal deficit of 5.5% was not only lower than 8.2% last year, but also lower than its budgeted targeted of 6.6%. From the Economic Survey of Pakistan 2015-2016 Profile of the Public Debt The Public Debt to Revenue Ratio stood at 440% during 2013-14 and witnessed 39%. Point improved as compared with last fiscal years indicating some easing in government indebtedness. Government is committed to reduce this ratio by 350% by increasing its revenue. If you look at the overall trend of the profile of the public debt, the overall trend shows that overall the public debt has been increased. Component wise detail of the domestic debt. Domestic debt increased by R is 1012 billion during first month of current fiscal 
and recorded at R is 11,932 billion at end March 2015. Why it's increased by that much? This is due to the issuance of PIBs and T bills amounting to 781 billion rupees and R is 566 billion respectively. Components are the composition of the external debt. So this pie chart diagram explain that at the end March 2015, external debt and liabilities EDL was dominated by public and publicly guaranteed debt having share of around 74%. So the major proportion in the external debt is occupied by the public and publicly guaranteed debt while the risk pro proportion is a private sector debt, public sector enterprises, IMF and banks etc. From the previous lectures, we conclude that overall the debt burden of the Pakistan economy from historic perspective has increased. Now, what is the consequences of that huge amount of debt on the Pakistan economy? So the increase in the debt stock and rise in the debt burden in the recent past has negatively affected the economy. What are those negative consequences? Eroding the purchasing power that devalue the currency like Pakistani rupees. It will further increase the inflation rate and overall negatively influencing the whole economy, especially the poor segment of the society. Furthermore, when the debt burden is increased, what will happen? It diverts the resources from development or productive activities to non-development expenditures. Economic growth also being affected, insufficient investment, increasing waste and corruption, funds not being allocated on high economic and social return projects. From this picture, we conclude that on a domestic front within the boundary of the Pakistan economy, a robust growth rate of GDP. If our GDP is increased, we will overcome or reduce the debt burden. A healthy growth in revenue and export. If here our revenue or the tax rate and our export is increased, it will improve the health or the performance of the Pakistan economy. An increase in remittances as more and more remittances comes to the economy. Stability in the exchange rate and stable reserve position. On the external front, when Pakistan is dealing with the rest of the world, Pakistan is aligned with the use against the war on terror post 9-11. So they have the bilateral ties with the US reprofiling of first club bilateral debt 
on a long term horizon the prepayment of the expensive debt and the relative shift in contracting new loans. So, on the external debt what the Pakistan or the Pakistan authorities should do? They should bargain with the donors like IMF, the Friends of Pakistan to provide the loan aid loan is a soft loan not is a hard loan like more and more interest we are not in a position to repay that and also the Pakistan high ups should more focus to generate more and more revenue at a domestic front front instead of rely on external debt. This was all about this particular lecture. For further understanding of this particular topic, these are the references. The Economic Survey of Pakistan 2015-16 which is available on this link. The student can also look at the book written by Isak Barzidi and the title of the book is Issued in Pakistan Economy. Also, the students can read and study the done in the news newspaper available on Monday. Thank you so much.